Hey guys, in this pill we are going to talk about the new math nodes and how to use them to create conditions and execution stoppers. Also we'll look into the latent upscaler workflow that makes use of all these new features. All these nodes are part of the ConfUI Essentials. Remember to install and upgrade the extension before going any further. Okay, I'm starting from loading an image. Then with get image size, I can extract width and height. Now I want to know if the image is in landscape or portrait mode. I'm adding a simple comparison, connecting width and height to A and B, and set the greater than as comparison. This nodes outputs true if the condition is met, otherwise false. In this case, it will return true if width is bigger than height. So if the image is in landscape mode, I can use this comparison with a simple condition node. I connect the comparison to the evaluate input. And now I can decide what to do when the image is in landscape or portrait mode. So let's say I want to crop it to a square based on the orientation. I'm adding an image crop, convert width and height to inputs and connect the height to both of them. This will be the cropped version if the image is in landscape mode. Now I duplicate the crop node and this time connect the width. And this will be the crop with portrait images. All left to do is to connect the first crop node to the on true input and the second to on false. If I add a preview, we should get a square picture. Okay, now I also want to crop it in the middle, not on the left. To do that, I need a simple math, connect width and height, and as operation, I can just do A minus B divided by 2. I repeat the same, but this time I use B minus A divided by 2. That will take care of portrait orientation. Then in the first crop, I convert X to input and connect the integer value of the first math node and repeat the same for Y in the second crop node. Now the result will always be a square cropped in the middle for landscape and portrait. Of course, I'm not suggesting you to use this mess to just crop images. There are better ways to do that. This is just to show you the potential. Now, let's see how we can simplify this ordeal because this is too much spaghetti even for an Italian. Okay, let me grab a simple math. I'm connecting the comparison to A and also width and height. Now the value A will be either 1 if the condition is true or 0 if false. As operation I use A multiplied by C or B. In landscape mode A is equal to 1, so what the formula does is 1 times height or width. As an example let's assume that width is 1024 and height 512. So we have 1 multiplied by 512 or 1024. Or is an operator that returns uh, the first non-zero number to the left. So in this case it will return 512. If we are in portrait mode, A becomes 0. So we have 0 by 512 or 1024. The result of 0 times 512 is, of course, 0. So the operator OR will take the next valid number, which is 1024. So basically, this node will return the height in landscape and the width in portrait. Easy peasy. Next, we are gonna calculate the offset for the crop. I can use two math nodes like we did before, but that's lame. You often have to deal with two dimensions, so I made simple math dual that spares us uh, some noodles. I need to connect the comparison to A, width and height. In the first formula I write A multiplied B minus C divided by 2. In the second 
not a multiplied by c minus b divided by 2. The only thing that is different from before is that we are using the operator not. In a boolean system, not simply inverts the value. When a is 1, not a will be 0. So in this case, value 1 will be 0 in portrait mode and value 2 will be 0 in landscape mode. Now I can duplicate an image crop, convert the Y to input and connect the first simple math to both width and height and the in values of the simple math dual to X and Y. If I try it now, I should get the same result, but uh, with far less nodes. Now I can delete all these nodes that I don't need and tidy up a little. This could be actually simplified even more, but let's leave it as it is for now. Okay, at this point, I want to upscale this image. I'm adding an upscale image by with a factor of two and connect image and preview. But I don't want to upscale every time. I want a manual switch to decide whether I want the image upscaled or not. I need a simple condition node, math boolean, and connect them together. If the switch is selected, the image will be upscaled. If it's not, I'm passing the image as it is. The result goes in the preview, of course. Let me make it bigger so we can see the difference. Okay, if I generate with the switch on false, the image won't go through the upscaling. If I activate the switch, the image will go through the upscale image node. There are quite a few math nodes uh, you can play with. If you search simple in the node library, you'll find uh, most of them. I've made this uh, Flux workflow as a kind of showcase of the math nodes and it's also a nice example of noise injection. So I noticed that Flux sometimes generates uh, images that are little washed out. In my previous video we talked about how noise injection can help uh, increase in details and textures. So I thought I could make a workflow that injects noise and also upscales the image. And since going back and forth the pixel space is expensive, everything happens in the latent space. The concept is very simple. Uh, the workflow upscales the first pass in the latent space, then split it into two halves, then it applies noise to the tiles before performing a second pass. Always in the latent space, the tiles are merged uh, together and some more light noise is added before a final third pass. If you look at the result, we get a bigger image, of course, but also with a lot more interesting details. The wings especially got a lot of nice features. Also, uh, the leg now has this nice skin texture. Overall, it is a much more interesting picture. So, a few notes before going any further. Uh, first, it's not a one-shot solution. Uh, there's a lot of tinkering with the various parameters and we'll look into that in a moment. Sometimes you need to change seeds a few times to get a good result and you may also need to prompt the tiles individually. Uh, second, this is not really an upscaler. The result won't be a higher resolution of the first pass. It will be a higher details image based on the original generation. Okay, with that out of the way, let's see how the math nodes help me uh, building this workflow. Here on the upper left, I have width and height of the first pass and the scale factor of the final image. In this case, it's upscaled 1.375 times. This is a latent upscaler, so we can't really push too much. Then I have a series of math nodes that calculate the size and position of each tile, taking care of landscape and portrait modes. Here above the first image, I have an execution blocker. If I set it to false, only the first pass will be generated. 
Otherwise, we will continue to the upscale phase. If I open the condition node, you see all I have to do is to connect nothing to the on false input. This way, when the switch is off, Comfy will just stop there. Near the tiles generation, I have these sliders. Here is where you can play with the parameters and where the magic happens. For example, I can try to add more details by increasing the noise strength. To the right of the slider, I have this math node that does some normalization on the values. In this case, it converts the slider to a noise strength that can go from 0.38 to 0.52. I'm also setting the variations to 0.8 so we can go further away from the first pass and I'm also lowering the slider uh, that sets the smoothness. Now of course we risk to add too much noise but let's give it a go anyway. Yeah we were able to squeeze some more details, we got earrings now. But uh, every image is different and what works uh, for this one might not work with another. Uh, here in the final pass we can also inject uh, more noise if needed, but at one point the sampler won't be able to make sense of all this noise, so you need to strike a balance. If you look at the skin on the leg now, in fact we got quite some cellulite. I made a lot of tests and with accurate configuration you can get uh, very nice transitions from smooth to detailed and stop the injection exactly where you want it. Anyway, uh, this is for dev, I also have a version for Schnell, uh, the result is not as good especially at uh, high scale factors, but still it can help especially with messy compositions uh, with a lot of details like this one. The workflow here was able to squeeze a lot of fine details. Okay, I think that's all for this pill. Math and condition are very important features that help automate complex tasks and achieve very interesting workflows. In the next pill we will probably talk about loops and things are gonna get really interesting. So yeah, I hope you found this video interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments and see you next time. Ciao.